Are you wondering how you can run other notebooks in a notebook in Maxed Fabric? This video I'm going to cover a few different ways of running notebooks in a notebook and how to pass parameters and exit values between notebooks. Stay tuned! Welcome to the video, my name is Alex and on this channel I cover Maxed Fabric and Azure related topics. In this video we're continuing our journey with Maxed Fabric data engineering and today we're covering running notebooks in a notebook. There are a few different methods how you can do this, but there are some limitations and differences between these methods that are good to understand so you can choose the best option for your use case. But now let's go to Fabric and check out these methods there. Here I have a blank notebook that we are going to use to demonstrate the first method of running notebooks within a notebook. We are going to use this notebook to run this other notebook where I have these few cells of code here. In the first cell we take in some parameters and I have added default value for our param1. And I have enabled this to be parameter cell by toggling parameter cell from this list. Then we are defining this function print this that will basically just print the value that we are giving it and adding this string this is and that value. Then we are running that print this function by using the parameter value that we are passing to this notebook. Next we are just printing out some runtime context of this notebook so we get some context information. And in the last cell I have commented out this exit function that would actually give this exit value for this notebook. But for now I don't want to have this exit function to be part of the execution here and I will reveal the reason for you quite shortly. Now we are back in that blank notebook and let's add this run magic command here. With this run magic command we can run other notebooks by just specifying the notebook name that we want to run. So if we would run this cell now it would actually execute that notebook that I just showed to you. Let's see what happens when this executes. We can see that we get all the prints that happened in that notebook to this notebook as well. So we get that function execution there and it only prints the default value of our param1 since I didn't give any parameters when we executed that notebook. Then we have also that notebook context here. Next we can modify this run magic command a bit and add this parameter value for our param1. And let's run this and let's see what happens. Now it has executed and we can see that now we printed out this param value according to our print, print function that we have here. So now we replace that param value here with the parameter that came out from this notebook. Maybe somebody has already spotted that when we are printing out this notebook context here, our current notebook name is actually the name of our main notebook, not the sub notebook that we are running here. Because basically when we use this run magic command here, this is actually almost the same thing that we would add all of the code inside this notebook to the beginning of this notebook here. So basically these notebooks are using the same execution context and then we are executing that notebook and the code of it part of this notebook in a sense. So they are running in the same session here. And this is going to be one of the crucial differences between the method that we're covering right now, meaning the magic command run, compared to the other methods that we're going to cover later on in this video. Also, when using this run magic command, like I described, this is the same thing that we would have all of those codes as part of this notebook. This means that if we would use that print this function, it should be available in this session as well when we run that notebook using this run magic command. And let's try to run this and let's see what happens. We can see that we can call this function in this notebook as well now. Personally, I use this run magic command in a cases when I want to separate parts of the same notebook to another notebook. For example, in a case where I have a lot of custom made functions part of that solution and I don't want to clutter my main notebook with those functions. Then I will add those functions to another notebook and then just add this run magic command that points to that notebook and run that before I execute my main notebook. And that is how I can keep my main notebook nice and clean. Also, now let's go back to this sub notebook and let's uncomment this exit value here. And I can demonstrate what happens when we have uncommented this. Now let's run this code again and let's see what happens when we have that exit value uncommented. 
Now our notebook has run and we can see that exit value here. But we can also see that we didn't execute this cell here. Because since these notebooks are running in the same context, this exit value will actually exit this notebook as well. So that exit value will stop the execution of this entire notebook set here. Next we can move into other methods of running notebooks within a notebook. But before we do that, I would like you to know that I spent ton of my free time creating these videos for you. And that's why I would like you to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel for more Marked Fabric data engineering content. It doesn't cost you anything and I would highly appreciate that. But now let's continue with the video. Here I have another blank notebook that I'm going to use to demonstrate those other methods of running notebooks in a notebook. And for this we are going to use this functionality called Notebook Utils that I've already covered in a separate video. I will leave a link to that video in the description below if you want to check that out. In those Notebook Utils we have these Notebook functionalities and there we have this function called Run. And with this Run function we can define the notebook that we want to run and the timeout for that notebook and then we can also pass some parameters there. And now we can run this and let's see what happens. And now we have run that same notebook that we ran previously, but using this different method this time. And now I would like to use this print this function that I have defined inside this notebook. Let's try to run that function in this notebook. And we can see that print this function is not defined, even though we have that function in this notebook. This is because when using this notebook utils run command, when running these notebooks it is not executing in the same execution context as this main notebook. So it will have its own execution context and we can see that when we open up this notebook log here and when we are printing out this notebook context we can see that now we are getting the current notebook name as the sub notebook name here not the main notebook name here and also that same thing is reflected in our exit value where i'm also adding that current notebook name and this means that we cannot utilize functions that we have in these other notebooks that we are running using this notebook utils run commands. So this is one of the key differences between these two methods when running notebooks. Also a good thing to note here that this exit function here doesn't actually exit this main session here. It only exits the subsession that we are running there. So this wouldn't stop the execution of this entire notebook even though we are running that exit function as part of this sub notebook. And if we want we can also catch those exit values to variables like this. And there we can see that we are now printing out this exit value that came out from this notebook when we ran that. Also with this notebook utils we are able to run multiple notebooks by using this run multiple function. For this we can give this array of notebooks and we can just specify the name of the notebooks here and then we can run them. And we can also catch the exit values coming out of those notebooks and let's see how those exit values look in this case. Let's run this. And we can see that both of our notebooks ran fine. And here is the other notebook, the sub 2 that we run as our second notebook. And there we have the exit values coming out from those notebooks. And if we would like to parse the exit values here, we can do it this way. So basically we would select this exit value variable here and then we would select the number of notebook that we are going to get. So basically this is the number 0, this is the number 1 and there are the properties for those. And then out of that we can get the exit val property. And when we run this we should get this here. And there it is. But we can also utilize this run multiple function in another way. Here is the code that we could use. We can actually specify this DAG and then pass that DAG to a run multiple function. And to this DAG we specify these activities that are the notebooks that we want to run. And here we can see how to specify these notebooks to this DAG. So basically we give name to our activity. I usually use just the notebook name. Then we give the notebook name here. And then we can give timeout to that notebook. And then we can pass parameters to that notebook. And then we can specify if we want to retry that notebook if we get an error message. And what will be the retry interval in seconds if we get that error. And many of these properties have default values and you don't need to specify them. And these retry functionalities are optional. So basically you only would have to specify the name and the path to be able to use this. But here I'm also specifying parameters for our second notebook as well. 
And cool thing about this DAG is that we can define these dependencies. For example, I have this sub3 notebook here, and here I'm specifying that it's dependent on these two activities that we're running first here. So these two will have to execute successfully first before we can run this last activity here. Then we can also specify this total timeout for this entire execution here. And then we can also specify how many notebooks we want to run in parallel. And also we can specify this display DAG via graph this option to be true so we can get this visualization of our notebook execution. I will shortly show to you how that will look. Also we can get some exit values out of this execution as well. Let's run this and let's see what happens. And now it is running and we can see that now those notebooks are executing. And now our first two notebooks are executing and our third notebook is actually waiting for these two to be executed. And it will run after they have executed. And now those two went fine and now our third one is executing. And it should be finished quite soon. And now it is done as well. And there is the visualization that I have specified here that I want. And there we can see that we need to first run these two notebooks and then execute that notebook three. And here is the exit value that we are getting out of this run multiple function this time. So instead of numbers, now we are getting these activity names that we can use to query these individual exit values here. And here is a print function that will get this sub3 exit value out from this object that we are getting as a return value out of that. And we can run this and see that we now have the sub3 exit value that is there. I hope you now have an understanding how you can run notebooks in a notebook in Muxed Fabric. If you'd like to learn more about Fabric, check out this video next. Now I thank you for watching and see you in that video.